Hello everybody. Organization and management of early childhood education centers. Under this, today we are going to deal with the topic theoretical perspectives in management of early childhood education programs. The objective of this lesson to understand the various philosophies guiding in the management of early childhood education programs. As we have already understood that early childhood period begins from 2 years and lasts up to 8 years and it is a very critical period of growth and development of the child. Even the research highlights the importance of the role of the parents and the importance of high quality early education in supporting the children's learning and development. The foundation of years are very critical for the children's life chances and most of the children who are developing well at the end of their foundation years will achieve well in school. Let us see what the program philosophy should be. The program goals that determine the early childhood education curriculum and teaching strategies are based on the program philosophy. The specific goals for each child and each group grow out of these program goals that are based on the philosophy. The two major questions to be answered in connection with the program philosophy are who is going to decide the philosophy? Usually the director decides the philosophy or else when the planner who is having a specific ideas about the program philosophy hires a director who can operate with this philosophical framework. The program philosophy must reflect the values, the beliefs, the needs of the director and the program planners and the families who are participating in this program. However, the administrators should hold on to the philosophies, the theories and the rationale that will guide their particular program. What is the basis for deciding the philosophy? When programs are planned and implemented, the curriculum content and the teaching strategies reflect a philosophy that are based on the assumptions about how the children will learn, the values of the program planners and the families involved, the views of the planners regarding some basic issues in the education. First one assumption about how children will learn. In broadest terms, assumptions about how children learn fall into three major categories that are environmental, maturational and interactional. The environmental factor, it assumes that the child's learning is dependent on the extrinsic motivators like the compliments, smiles, gold stars which have a theoretical basis of Watson and Skinner. The maturational perspective. This assumes that there is an internal driving force that leads to the emergence of cognitive and affective system which in turn determines the child's readiness for mastery of developmental tasks. The mastery of the task itself is rewarding so that the reinforcement is based on the intrinsic satisfaction derived from the accomplishment and mastery of the task. The theorists who are associated with this maturational perspective are Freud and Jessel. The interaction perspective. This assumes that learning results from dynamic interaction between the emerging cognitive and affective systems and the environment. The child is intrinsically motivated to select approximately from the environment. The adult is also responsible for preparing the environment for interesting and timely appropriate questions and ideas to alert the child to learning opportunities in each situation. The adult facilitates the development of intellectual competences. Most recently, the interaction approach has come from Piaget. This is about the program philosophies and policies. After having understood the program philosophy, let us now see the values of the program planners and the parents.
the program philosophy is influenced by the priorities of parents and program planners set for the children. When most administrator questioned, they would state that they value the optimum development of the child, that is the social, emotional, physical, intellectual development of the children. However, when the philosophy of the ongoing program is carefully scrutinized and analyzed that the priorities needed exist favoring the child's intellectual development and the child's socio-emotional development. The views on basic issues in education. A number of basic issues in education are implied to the philosophy. One of the issues is the content versus the process issue, which is sometimes interpreted as a school orientation versus human orientation. Those who believe in content or the school orientation support the motion that the goal of education is to provide children with the content which enables them to succeed in school. Their focus is on preparation for the next step in school and the achievement is evaluated by relating each child progress to some norms or grade levels. The information about some influencing early years, the theorist would assist the individuals who are currently managing the early childhood developmental centers. Therefore, any person who has established the early childhood centers or working in early years context should have the knowledge about the early years. Maturational perspective. Nature can shape the process after the birth and most clearly through genetic programming that may determine the whole sequence of later development. The term maturation is used by Jessel describes such genetically programmed sequential patterns of change. The changes in body size and shape, the changes in muscles and bones and changes in nervous system all may be programmed in this way. The timings of these changes may differ from one child to another, but the basic sequence is essentially same for all the children. The instructions for the sequence are shared by all members of the species. They are a part of specific heredity information that is passed on the moment of conception with all the children being endowed with an innate plan for orderly growth. According to this perspective, any maturational pattern is marked by three qualities. It is universal appearing in all children across the cultural boundaries. It is sequential involving some patterns of unfolding skills or characteristics and it is a relatively impervious to environmental influences. However, modern views of maturation do concede that experience plays a role, that sometimes the minimal environmental support is necessary, for example, an adequate diet, an opportunity for movement and variety of experiences. If we are incorporating a maturational perspective in our work with young children, we should believe that the young children need time to mature and develop the knowledge of themselves in this world prior to commencement of formal education and that much damage can be done by hurrying the children into formal instruction. This supports the child's interest and personal styles of learning, patiently allow them to develop naturally and biologically. Adopting a managerial role with respect to the children's growth and development and allow them to naturally unfold. This is about the maturational perspective. After having understood the maturational perspective, let us move on to see the behaviorism or behavioristic perspective. The reinforcement theory which is proposed by Skinner 
put forward the notion that in addition to the role played by maturation in children's development, their behavior are shaped by environmental conditions and systematic reinforcement. From a behaviorist perspective, growth and development are seem to be a result of connections established between the stimulus input and behavioral responses that are shaped by a wide variety of reinforcers like food, drink, sometimes a prize or a smile or a new toy. The role of the adults is to provide these reinforcements and to gradually reward better and better approximation of appropriate responses. Therefore, the development is seen as a process of individual learning, increasingly complex and refined ways of acting as a result of the consequences that followed the behavior attempted. If you are incorporating a behaviorist perspective in your work with young children, what you have to do? You have to assess and provide what you feel is necessary in response to behavior in belief that the children acquire many favorable and unfavorable responses simply by watching and listening to others around them. We should apply a set of practical procedures that combine reinforcement, modeling, manipulation of situational cues to change the behavior. We should make decisions about when it is appropriate to use consequences, when to use a reinforcement or rewards or when to use punishment to either a reinforce a positive behavior or deter a negative behavior. The focus of behaviorism is on conditioning of the observable human behavior. J.B. Watson, who is father of behaviorism, defines learning as a sequence of stimulus and response actions in a observable cause and effective relationships. The behaviorist example of classical conditioning which demonstrates the process whereby the human learn to respond to a neutral stimulus in such a manner that would normally be associated with the unconditional stimulus. This application of operant condition to education is simple and direct. Teaching is arrangement of contingencies of reinforcement under which the students or the children learn. They learn without teaching in their natural environments, but the teacher will arrange the special contingencies which will help in learning and hastening the appearances of the behavior which would otherwise be acquired slowly or making sure that the appearance of such behavior will otherwise never occurs. The cognitive developmental theory which is developed by Piaget presents the idea that the children actively construct knowledge as they manipulate and explore the world around them. Cognitive development is seen to take place in four broad stages from birth through adolescence and through adulthood, each of which is characterized by qualitatively distinct ways of thinking. The central to the theory is the biological concept of adaptation, which perpetuates the human physiological structure of the body and mind to adopt and fit with the environment. Piaget's cognitive development perspective introduced the idea that children are active learners who initiate their innate drive to make the sense for their world in a generally stimulating social and physical environment. Changes in thinking takes place gradually over time and children learn best when they are developing appropriate practices and guide their learning. If you are incorporating this developmental perspective in work with the young children, what we have to do? We have to provide a developmentally appropriate child-centered curriculum. We should plan in response to the children's interest. We should ensure that many opportunities and activities are provided for both indoor and outdoor discovery and learning and emphasis 
the discovery learning and direct contact with the environment rather than the adult directed teaching. This is about the developmental perspective. After having understood the behavior, maturational and developmental perspectives, let us move on to see the psychodynamic perspective. Erickson has introduced this psychosocial theory, which plays emphasis on the role of the ego in child's development. The psychodynamic perspective, it extends upon this theory that through notion, the child's mind, body, physical and social emotional worlds form a integrated system that guides the growth and development of the child. The children's learning is viewed as a holistic process where the skills and competences develop as a result of interactions with a broadly ranging activities experienced in real life context. A special feature of this perspective is the emphasis placing on the individual's unique life history, his skills and learning dispositions and the recognition that the individual's biological makeup and experience will lead to a wide individual differences in the development of specific skills. This perspective is aligned with the child center and humanistic approach that acknowledges the effective and subjective nature of learning and the importance of assisting the children to develop the individual identity and self-esteem. If you are incorporating this psychodynamic perspective in the work with young children, we should have acknowledged the individual differences and support the individual's growing sense of self. Consciously and actively draw out the children's thoughts and feelings to assist them to understand the implications of their actions. We have to help the children learn about the social rules and encourage self-regulation and positive social interaction. We should place the children's ideas and feelings centrally in curriculum negotiations and the main objective being to help the children become self-reflective and responsible for their own actions. We should design the program that are developmentally appropriate and cater for the child's emotional well-being and developing the personality of the child. This is about the psychodynamic perspective. After having understood the psychodynamic perspective, let us see what is the socio-constructivist perspective. While agreeing with Piaget that the children are active and constructive, Vygotsky viewed the development as a socially mediated process that was dependent on support of more knowledgeable others. According to Vygotsky, the social interaction with the adults is necessary for the children to acquire new knowledge and ways of thinking and behaving that reflects the community's culture. A socio constructivist perspective rejects the idea of universal developmental stages and instead presents the idea that as children acquire language, their ability to communicate will be enhanced and this leads to ongoing changes in behavior and thought which can greatly change from one culture to other culture. A special component of the theory is the zone of proximal development. It explains how adults or more mature peers can support the young children by providing scaffolding that helps them to construct new knowledge and skills. If you are incorporating this socio-constructivist perspective in working with young children, we should view the children as a competent, capable, active and constructive beings that are dependent on adults or more informed peers for learning. We should guide the children's learning by tailoring the interventions for individual achievement. We should encourage the children of varying abilities to work together cooperatively through sharing of ideas and skills. Engage the children in wide variety of language-based 
activities which help to language experiences and encourage the description and questioning in the child. We should plan programs which encourage imaginative play and establish a community of learners where individuals and small or large group contribute to the varied knowledge and expertise to solve the real life problems. This is about the social constructivist perspective. And then we are going to see the ecological perspective. The ecological system theory as described by Bronfen Berner, it places development within a complex system of relationship that connects the child, the family, the school and surroundings and the community. The theory supports the idea that biological dispositions joins with the environmental forces at multiple levels to influence the development in unique ways. As such, the child development is strongly influenced by layering of relationship with the parents, family, friends and experiences within the neighborhood in a setting such as a child care or a school and finally by customs, laws and the dominant cultural values of that community. If you are incorporating an ecological perspective in your work with young children, you should plan a child centered responsive programs which incorporates the aspects of each child's life. Acknowledge the importance of caring and close reciprocal relationship for developing child. Encourage socially mediated group learning. Encourage the family involvement in the programs and regular information exchange between the home and child care settings. Ensure the maintenance of nested structures between the child, family, surroundings, community and culture. Encourage the development of social networks between the children and families. Respect the individual differences as they relate to the ability, gender, economic status, ethnicity and religion. This is about the ecological perspective. So, today, we have understood the philosophies for managing early childhood education centers. We have seen different perspective like the behavioristic perspective, the socialistic perspective, the psychodynamic perspective and the cognitive or developmental perspective of Piaget, the socialistic perspective of the Ericsson's. So, according to the program which has been selected for starting that early childhood education center, depending on the perspective which is selected, the child development should be encouraged and taken in the center. Hope you have understood the lesson. Thank you.